it's Rob here and welcome to uh, probably the first in my series of uh, build videos on the bodywork of my Tamiya TD4 Super Avante. Um, as you can see I've already started on the driver figure. Um, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, I've got uh, lots of paint brushes lots of different paints ready um, the driver helmet I've glued together and as I hope you can see I've uh, filled the holes because he's meant to be screwed in via his head but uh, in this one he isn't so uh, he's already filled and sanded and smoothed ready for painting so uh, we can get on with him in a bit. Um, I've been doing a bit of bodywork cutting out. So I've uh, cut out this. Uh, this goes behind the driver. Something like that I think. And it's painted black eventually. Um, but I've cut this out and I've used a combination of uh, scissors and the uh, scratch and sniff. I mean score and snap method for around these bits and I don't know if you can see but I've left them at the minute unsanded just to show you so you get quite a good finish anyway but uh, I'm no good at doing these bends it's, it's sort of mini straight lines so uh, I will be sanding those down and the same with this uh, cockpitty bits. Um, one thing to mention is before you cut them out, especially this cockpit and your rear wing, I would recommend that you uh, look at the manual and make your holes first. That's a 6mm one, which I think is uh, for the aerial wibbly wobbly to go through. So I've done that because uh, I think it does stick up a bit even uh, though I've got a 2.4 gig and again with this uh, I've used a combination of the scratch and sniff method I uh, went a bit off there if you can see that so yeah still needs sanding but you know unlike the scissors which I still must admit I do prefer because uh, there's less chance of me cocking up. Um, you do get a smooth edge that uh, if you're good, unlike me, you probably wouldn't need to uh, sand down. But uh, anyway, I'll be sanding those down a lot. If we get rid of all of this bit for now. We can take a look at the body. And... Yes, lots to cut out and lots of holes to make. So, again, I would uh, strongly recommend that you go through with your reamer and uh, basically do your holes first because we've got holes here, here and here, a hole there, holes here. And this side, um, I'm not really sure what that is for. I don't know if you cut that out or this one. That's where the aerial comes out, I believe. We've got two holes here for the cockpit and a further hole there for the body mount. And then for your mud guards, as I call them. We've got two holes either side, one, two, so lots of holes to cut in, so uh, I won't bore you with that. You know how it all goes. You pop it in, line it up and push it in and spin it. So I'll do all of that off camera. And I'll uh, get set up for, uh, I think, a bit of painting of me uh, driver, because... Uh, it does take quite a while and uh, I'll get back to you shortly. OK 
Okay, so I'm going to try using the uh, scratch and sniff, or should I say, score and snap method to cut one of these uh, wings out. Sorry, mud guards. Um, yeah, let's just uh, get into it, eh? And uh, hopefully my uh, goggles don't get in the way too much, but they probably will. And I think what I'm going to do is score there first. Oops. Oh well. Right, now what I'm going to try and do is from here gently score around like so and then come off there. And again. A bit more pressure this time. And one last time. And then what I've also found is, at least to start them off some of them, although I think I've cut through that one, is it's easier to use me little pliers. But I think in this case it might just be all right. Yeah. So that's one bit. So second cut. Uh, had a few technical issues. Hopefully we won't get any more. But uh, who knows? So here we go. Try and see what I'm doing. But. Uh, do apologise if me horrible, ugly, bald head gets in the way. Like so, so I'll carry on. And uh, once I get round to here, I'll uh, stick the camera back on. Okay, let's try a bit more then. Right, well, I, after that, <laughs> I'm going to carry on off camera. I can't be doing, I need to see. So, stay tuned. Okay folks, so the weather's cold 
and raining outside so I'm uh, back in my workshop with my extractor so it's going to get a bit noisy. I've got my three paints here. We've got uh, the gunmetal, the yellow and PS16 metallic blue. So the metallic blue I'm going to do first because uh, that's the most bits. So I won't be doing much talking over this because it's going to get quite noisy in a second. So uh, I've shaken my can up. I've got my uh, spray gun attachment. So let's get cracking. Just in case you can hear me, I'm just doing a light dust coat first off, and now for the wing, and I'm just double checking, pressing the uh, masking down again one last time. That's it for the blue. That's it for the first round of blue. Uh, uh, what I forgot to do was pre shake up my other cans, so I'll stop videoing for a minute <laughs> and be back to you shortly. There's the uh, cockpit done. So there's the uh, finished body, well apart from the decals, um, got to admit it's not the best paint job I've ever done. Uh, installed the uh, cockpit headrest shall we say already, that's just a bit of double sided tape as shown here. And as you will see shortly. I've uh, prepped cockpit instrument panel so that needs to be attached so we'll do all of that once we've uh, done the uh, bodywork decals so I'll crack on
Okay, so I think I've uh, got all the decals stuck on. So uh, as you can see, I've attached this rear spoilery thing already. And if we open one, do one to go into the inside, I've attached the cockpit as well. Now uh, the kit comes with just standard two mil nuts. MF3s as you can see here um, but again no mention of uh, thread lock but as it happens I have some of these which are 2mm um, nylock nuts so I'm swapping all those for, for those nylock nuts um, otherwise I would have used thread lock but hey I think uh, these nylocks locks are a bit easier so that's that I just need to uh, finish putting the driver together and installing him so uh, I'll be back in a bit well, the very last step, step 54 of uh, this build completely, is to install the rear wing, the body itself, and the rather short wibbly wobbly, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Now, there's a few notes on this. First off, it says here you can use either part A9 or A10. I'm going to use A9 because it is slightly chamfered. If you can see that, it's difficult to tell, I know, but uh, it is angled slightly. So there's a note down here that says. Uh, wing angle can be adjusted by altering direction of A9. So I'm going to have the slope pointing forwards. Um, I don't think it's going to make that much difference. But hey, so we get the chassis. Pop the two A9s on. Then we need the wing, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. It's one of those times where it would be nice if you'd got three hands. Then we need part A21, which is this uh, sort of combed washer. So there's a flat edge and a domed edge. So I believe you want the dome facing up. Then your O-ring. And then potentially the hardest bit. Oh no, oh not too bad, he says. There we go, and that holds that quite firm. Come through, ah there we go. Well, first one was fairly easy, that was a pain in the hours. So, um, yep. Yeah. There's me little wibbly wobbly. Uh, the body, I've gone round with some uh, fiberglass tape on areas where I think might rub. And uh, I've done some testing. I've got some foam here for over the body mounts. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, bodywork build and look forward to seeing you for its first run. Thanks for watching. Bye!